What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. I am Briggs and I once did the Kessel Run in less than 11 parseps. My record doesn't stand because I was using those Nikes that have that little pogo stick in them apparently. I guess they're saying that was cheating. How are you supposed to get ahead if you don't do a little cheating? Did you know that it's not just athletes that cheat? Sometimes our leaders and elected officials cheat. When they do it, it's called corruption, fraud, conspiracy, theft of government funds, tax evasion, extortion, racketeering, insurance, fraud, to name a few. Can you say corruption? The people on this list can. They heard it a bunch during their trial. We hear so much about government corruption these days, it almost sounds like it's something new. But trust me, it's been going on since the Romans, and before the Romans. It's not just the big time politicians, like the federal government and stuff like that. Sometimes it's local politicians, like mayors. You know the dudes that give away the oversized key to the city? The United States has a bunch of cities that had mayors do time. Some did a little time, and others got the big ride, like 20 years worth the big ride. Today we're looking at cities that had mayors that went to prison, and for how long? I guess any time you're talking about corruption, you're gonna have to start with. Number 10, Camden, New Jersey, Mayor Milton Milan. He was the first Latino mayor of Camden, New Jersey, and he was elected in 1997 before being convicted of corruption and, as you can imagine, removed from office, becoming the third Camden mayor in 20 years to be found guilty of corruption. To be honest, this list can be done with only New Jersey mayors. Most of them only did a year or two, so they didn't make the cut for this list, but still, there's a lot of them. Camden is known as one of the worst cities in the United States already, and then the people people get dudes like this, just making it worse for the 77,000 people that live there. Probably gonna be closer to 70,000 in the upcoming census, that's what's predicted. He was convicted because he laundered $65,000 in drug money, staged a break-in with his former business partner to collect insurance money illegally, like staging a burglary isn't already, you know, known as illegal. Is there a legal staged break-in for insurance money? I don't know. He used campaign money to pay for a vacation in Puerto Rico. He received two vehicles and thousands of dollars of free work on his home from contractors and authorized a shakedown of a $5,000 political contribution from the city's public defender. That's always great. Shaking down attorneys. The judge sentenced him to the maximum allowed under federal sentencing guidelines of seven years and three months in prison. Number 9. Cicero, Illinois Betty Lauren Maltese is a former town president of Cicero, Illinois. It's a city of about 84,000 and a suburb of Chicago. She is a member of the Republican Party and was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but raised in the Chicago area. Wow, surprise, surprise. She's from two of the most corrupt places in the country, and she's a corrupt politician? I guess nobody saw that one coming. Betty hit national spotlight for her role in an insurance scam, which robbed the town of $12 million in funds back in the early 2000s. Betty was sentenced to eight years in federal prison. She did her time in California. She was released on February 26, 2010. I read a lot of things about Betty, and most people feel that she was pretty much a fall guy. Her husband was like a low-level mobster and had mob ties and all that stuff, I guess. Number 8. East Cleveland, Ohio Emmanuel Anamwar is a Nigerian-American citizen who is the former mayor of East Cleveland, Ohio, a city of about 17,000 people. It's a suburb of Cleveland, in case the words East Cleveland didn't tip you off. Anamwar was sentenced to nine years in federal prison back in 2004 for public corruption and tax evasion. Anamwar is seen in a secret FBI video accepting seven $100 bills in an envelope. Prosecutors said that it was bribe money from a one-time powerful Cleveland consultant. Consultant. Earning time for good behavior, he was released to a halfway house in January of 2012. Now, okay, I'll give him this. Most of the time when I read things about corrupt politicians, they always claim that they were framed, they were set up, it's conspiracy from, you know, whatever. It's always something like that. They never own it. This is a quote from Anonwar. He said to Fox News upon his releases, I wish I could go back, but I'm not going back to recount what happened. We all make mistakes. I made very bad choices, and that's all it takes. And so he owned up to it. At least there's that. Number 7. Progreso, Texas. Mayor Omar Vela, his father Jose Guadalupe Vela Jr., and brother Michael Vela were arrested and charged with conspiracy mail fraud, violations of the Travel Act, theft, and bribery. These guys had the full boat. The 10 count indictment alleged that from June 2004 until somewhere around 2013, the Vela family members conspired to obtain bribes and kickbacks from several service providers. Those allegedly included a construction company and an architectural firm that was hired by the city of Progreso and the Progreso 
Progreso Independent School District to do some work. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. This town is an absolute mess. In 2014, a school board trustee, so this is like a year after all that nonsense went down, the trustee, Felix Hernandez Jr., was arrested driving a tractor trailer loaded with about 1,200 pounds of marijuana. Now, this is according to the court records. <laughs> Ooh, I want to call a real estate agent and move here. There's so much drama, it's better than television. This place is more dysfunctional than most of my family reunions. Number 6. New Roads, Louisiana Former New Roads Mayor Tommy Nelson Jr.'s 10-year prison stretch came from his conviction in an FBI sting operation dubbed Operation Blight Official. Nelson was found guilty in 2011 of accepting more than $22,000 in cash and other gifts for a municipal contract to a fictitious garbage can cleaning business called Cypher 5000. He wasn't the only one caught up in this, you know, Operation Blight Officials, but the other ones were either too small or there's other factors. We won't get into that. Okay, maybe one that's a little strange. The sting also netted White Castle Mayor Maurice Brown. What I found strange about this one, the mayor got 10 years for various forms of corruption and the town named a street after him. I'm not even kidding. Here it is. Number 5. New Orleans, Louisiana Ray Nagin was first elected as mayor in March of 2002. He was re-elected in 2006, and at the time, at least two-thirds of the city of New Orleans were still displaced from Hurricane Katrina. He was term-limited and left office on May 3, 2010. He was also famous for saying, New Orleans is a chocolate city and it'll remain a chocolate city at a news conference. This wasn't like him out drinking with friends. He said it like on the news. It seemed a little racist to me even at the time, and these days, I'm sure he'd be run out of town. Maybe not. I don't know. They really liked him. I remember him during the Hurricane Katrina coverage. He seemed very committed to the people of New Orleans, and he actually seemed like he cared. I guess he did, but he was also very committed to having a large bank account. A federal jury found Ray Nagin guilty of bribery and fraud. The former New Orleans mayor, who was 57 at the time, was accused of taking hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes and kickbacks. He was found guilty on 20 of those counts. Prosecutors also said Nagin accepted perks such as free travel, and he played a role in fun money and granite, actually, to Stone Age, a company that was run by his sons. The counts covered large portions of Nagin's two terms as mayor, so apparently he was doing this the whole time, from 2002 to 2010. Like I said, he was there during Katrina, and a lot of the money came from, you know, federal aid to help rebuild New Orleans. It's just a shame, because he was like a up-and-coming political star. I would say, at the time. Ray Nagin was convicted to 10 years in prison in 2014 for corruption. He's still appealing and trying to get it overturned to this day. Number 4. Jersey City, New Jersey Thomas Whelan was born in Jersey City on January 28th, 1922 as one of 13 children. To say the man had roots in this town, it's kind of obvious he did. Whelan flew 63 missions in World War II as a pilot for the Army Air Force. And that's what it was called before, it was the Army Air Force. It wasn't, I think, the mid-1950s that the Air Force was split into its own thing, but it originally was part of the army. Anyway, thanks for your service, Tom. But this is where it gets a little squirrely. Whelan was appointed mayor in 1963 when his predecessor was forced to resign over questions about his citizenship. Whelan then ran for mayor in 1965 and again in 1969, winning both times. In 1971, during his second term, Whelan was indicted by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of New Jersey as a member of the Hudson County 8 and was convicted in federal court for conspiracy and extortion in a multi-million dollar kickback scheme connected to the city and county contracts. Whelan served seven years of his 15-year sentence. He passed away in Florida in 2002. Now, the thing about the Hudson County 8, Whelan was one of eight city officials that were blatantly corrupt. From everything I've read, it was common knowledge that you had to go through these guys to get any contracts in the city. And it was just, when it's common knowledge, you know someone's going to find out about it eventually. And from everything I gathered, I don't think they cared. They were accused and convicted of having demanded and and accepted kickbacks amounting to hundreds of thousands of dollars to do business in Jersey City and Hudson County for more than a decade. Number three, Birmingham, Alabama. Larry Kangford was an American politician who had a one-term tenure as the mayor of the city of Birmingham, Alabama. Kangford was a very well-liked mayor by most of the residents in Birmingham. The man did a lot of good for the city. And then there's the people that didn't like him. The people that didn't like him talked about Langford's 2009 conviction for taking 235,000 in bribes while serving on the Jefferson County Commission. He got caught sending a county sewer project to an investment bank. Prosecutors said during the trial that Langford accepted luxury suits, watches, and cash. He was sentenced to 15 years and released by a federal judge after only serving eight. He was in really bad health. 
health, really bad health. Langford died on January 8th of 2019 at the age of 72. He suffered from several illnesses, including which was the final blow, COPD. I know a guy from Birmingham that lived there most of his life. He just recently moved to Oregon a couple years, two years, three years ago. Anyway, um, I mentioned this video to him and he said, yeah, he, he Langford got a lot of things done and he said a lot of people do like him, but <laughs> this is what he said. In my eyes, he'll always be a crook. So I told him, but yeah, you're a personal injury attorney, so that doesn't mean much. And he hung up the phone on me. I've known this guy forever. And he hung up the phone on me. We haven't talked since. It's only been about three days, but still. Number two, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Ed Pulowski is a American politician who served as the mayor of Allentown, Pennsylvania. He was elected in 2006 and stayed there until his resignation in 2018. He resigned after he was convicted on 47 federal charges related to corruption at City Hall. Now, before that, on April 17th, 2015, Pulowski announced that he would run for the Senate in 2016, but suspended his campaign the following July. Now, he'd also, in 2014, said he was running for the governor, but he couldn't get any money so scrap that plan. So that's two scrap plans. But on January 20th, 2016, the Allentown City Council unanimously voted no confidence in the mayor and called for him to resign. He didn't, but he still had his plans for the Senate. What made him think running for the freaking Senate was a good idea? The city didn't even want him anymore, but he still had plans to run for the Senate. So his trouble really started in 2013. The FBI began listening to communications in the Allentown City Hall. On July 2nd, 2015, the FBI raided the Allentown Allentown City Hall and Mayor Ed Pulowski's home as part of a more than two-year investigation into Allentown's contracting practices. Now that was in 2015. He still was going on with his plans for the Senate and his freaking house got raided. Are you confused at this point? I am too. I don't know what this dude was thinking or what his advisors were thinking. This was a weird story and I read about it for two hours. I'm still totally confused. He was sentenced to 18 years, 15 years in prison and three years supervision. And number one, Detroit, Michigan. Kwame Kilpatrick was born June 8, 1970. Kilpatrick attended Detroit's Cass Technical High School and graduated from Florida A&M University with a bachelor's degree in political science in 1992. In 1999, he received his Juris Doctorate degree from the Detroit College of Law. It's changed its name since, but still. Kilpatrick's mother, Carolyn, was a career politician, representing Detroit in Michigan's House of Representatives from 1979 to 1996, and serving in the United States House of Representatives for Michigan's 13th Congressional District for from 96 to 2010. I tell you all that so you know this man knows right from wrong in politics and in life. Detroit's had a bad enough time without all the garbage that was brought to this city by this guy and his people. That garbage includes denial of courtesy protection from the police because of late night parties. The police wouldn't protect him anymore after hours because of what was going on at the mayor's mansion or his house or whatever. Preferential hiring of friends and family. He was accused of that. Abuse of power allegations. 2010 indictment for tax evasion and Mail fraud, FBI corruption investigations into Kilpatrick's family and friends, SEC investigation into pension fund influence peddling, a dead stripper named Strawberry, you name it, it's happened with these people. The Federal Bureau of Investigation investigated corruption within Detroit City Hall, in particular how contracts were awarded. This all happened with undercover video, wiretaps, and informants. As a result, Kilpatrick, who's 49 currently, will be serving 28 years in prison for public corruption. He asked President Obama for a pardon and didn't get one. And most recently, he reached out to President Trump asking for a pardon. Kilpatrick's a lifelong Democrat. And I read the letter that he sent President Trump and... It's, it's a whole lot of butt kissing. It was pretty pathetic. But anyway, he's in jail for the long haul and I'd be shocked if he um, gets out anytime before he's 70. All right, so that is my list of most corrupt mayors in America. I could probably do three lists like that, but those were the ones that kind of stuck out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Don't forget all the links below. If you buy anything from Amazon, you go through my links. That helps out my channel. Buy a t-shirt. Subscribe if you haven't. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.